Hi guys, it's Dave here from GameSpot for E3 2016, joined by Jimmy, who has played Fallout 4 in a bit of a new experience. Fallout VR, right? Yes. Um, so I was really excited to hear that Bethesda was bringing uh, Fallout to VR. At the same time, though, I was a little bit worried. Uh, as a VR enthusiast, uh, I know that uh, games can be uh, can induce motion sickness if they're not done right. Right. Um, but you know, from what I played, I think Bethesda understands that and. Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. So you mentioned motion sickness, and Fallout is a game where there is a lot of exploring, a lot of traveling, a lot of walking around. What have they done to actually kind of combat that feeling? Sure, so uh, I think the issue comes down to, so if you were to simply uh, have like a joystick you know, used for movement, uh, it creates this issue called locomotion. Uh, in that it tricks your eyes into thinking like, hey, you're moving, but then your body's not fooled. Right. Uh, so that sort of disconnect makes you feel uh, nauseous. Uh, what Bethesda is doing with Fallout instead is that they're using a teleport mechanic, uh, which is uh, you know a feature that's actually getting more common in, in VR titles like the gallery and, and budget cuts and things like that that are already uh, coming to the HTC Vive already out. Um, yeah, so the really cool thing about the game is that uh, you actually, there's no in-game UI or menu or anything like that. It's all built into the Pip-Boy, which is actually located on your left arm. Oh, so to actually use your Pip-Boy, you're bringing your physical wrist with the, well, the controller in hand to actually manipulate the menu. Yes, yeah, using the controller, you have to, uh, you know, bring up your wrist, and then you can see the map and all your leveling up, uh, you know, UI from there. Uh, the Pip-Boy also allows you to, uh, to teleport as well, so, you know, with my left arm, I would just stick out a point at the ground, and then I'd be able to just like let go of the trigger and I teleport there. Uh, what I noticed is that uh, the teleportation has like a range. It seems to be about you know 40 to 50 feet or so. Right. And I think this was done on purpose so that if like a super mutant is chasing you or something like that, uh, you can't just simply like teleport to a mountain like across town or something. Yeah, it like makes that. sense. It it really feels like you're in the wasteland like visually. Um, and so the demo that I played actually took place at the Red Rocket uh, gas station, which is like near the beginning of the game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Bethesda rep was like, uh, you know, don't venture too far off from here because we're going to have raiders come attack you. So I was like, okay, cool. Once the raiders uh, eventually showed up, I teleported like around the corner, around the gas station, and I like, you know, fired at them with my pistol, and they'd fire back, and dog meat would come and attack them, attack them and things like that. Uh, and that was really cool. Uh, you know, interestingly enough, the, they gave me like a pistol, and I didn't have to reload, uh, and so I had infinite ammo, and there was no vet system either. Okay, um, pretty pretty odd for a, for a Fallout title, but I suppose. Yeah, being I, think in it, VR. I think they're still trying to work that out. They haven't ruled out you know vets at this point. Um, but yeah, as of right now, no vet system. How did the shooting in general actually feel? Because obviously. It being basically a shooting game, yeah. it needs to be pretty tight. It's an important mechanic. Yeah, so, uh, you know, like, it felt really one to one. If you've ever played a game like Space Pirate Train or something very similar, it really feels like you're holding a gun um, and it feels really accurate. That's good. So, I think the question that everyone wants to know is how was it being that close to Dog Me, feeling like you could reach out <laughs> and touch it? Uh, I almost shot him a couple times, which is uh, kind of a shame. Not allowed to do that. There's one gripe that I did have with the experience is that it looks. It looks quite real. Um, at the same time, though, because the game wasn't built for VR from the ground up, um, there was a lot of things that looked real, but I couldn't actually interact with them. I couldn't touch them. I couldn't pick them up. Uh, conversely, you know, there's a game like uh, like uh, Job Simulator, which is actually built for VR from the ground up. And in that game, you can pick up like apples and oranges and things like that, open up the kitchen doors and throw things across the room. It feels really good and tactile. Here, it feels a little bit hollow, like there were like doors that I couldn't open, or there were like tires that I couldn't pick up. And so it feels a little bit shallow, so that's kind of an interesting challenge for, for Bethesda to kind of figure out there. All right. Well, that being said then, obviously it is a demo of a game, like you said, wasn't pre-built for, for VR. Yeah. Do you think if Bethesda had VR in mind when they create a new title, do you think like, has this demo sold you on that idea? Do you think they'll be able to nail it? I think it? there's a couple weird things, too, because, like, in VR, it's in first person. It's supposed to be you, right? But at the same time, in the base game, like, the protagonist talks. Right. So it's going to be, I imagine it's going to be, like, a weird outer body experience to have, like, yourself talking, even though you're not. Yeah. So I don't know how they're going to, you know, work with that. So I don't know. All right. Well, it sounds interesting, at least. So, guys, for everything VR and everything E3 2016, make sure you stay tuned to GameSpot.com.